If you just got a Quest 2, I've even shown a base level interest in this f***ing headset. You likely have more Top Quest 2 games, 2022 remastered, updated, insane, clap your cheeks edition videos swarming you, then fly swarming marks, dead trim. And I'll be totally honest, 90% of those videos are probably from that f***ing British get hip. Hey, that guy. So today I'm wrapping up what I think are the most important games for the future of this headset or its surrounding community that are either currently out right now for you to play or will be releasing over the next year into one single definitive most important Quest 2 games video by listing them on a tier list. Me. God tier being the best, baseline being for already established VR game changes, honorable mentions, and dog water being the worst. Also, if you want to unsubscribe from this channel, first you gotta subscribe. So please hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 1 million unsubscribers by the end of the year. First, this goes without saying, this is all subjective. And being that this is a video made by me, uploaded to my channel, it will, believe it or not, be based off of my opinions and not yours. For the sake of mine and your sanity, Beat Saber, Rack Room, VR Chat, Gorilla Tag, Echo VR, Population 1, Saints centers and super hot instantaneously get a baseline on this tier list they're all solid games that have very clearly earned their place as some of the greatest experiences this headset can offer and have clearly proven themselves to be some of the most important and influential quest 2 games out there right now they won't be getting a god tier as in total honesty fucking sick of them <laughs> these should be your baseline for first games to own on this headset if you are new the games that i'm about to show off are the ones that to me feel like they are some of the most exciting when it comes to the future of this headset and the knock-on effect these games may have for the VR industry as a whole. Starting off with the biggest leap in VR locomotion yet, Stride and Stride's new multiplayer mode. Now, I know I've talked about Stride a lot. I get it. It's fucking annoying. I hate myself more than you do, trust me. But seriously, this new multiplayer mode encapsulates everything great about Stride and makes it even more fun with friends. As soon as Stride was announced almost a year ago, one of my first thoughts was I wish I could play tag with my friends with this style of locomotion motion and to be honest it kind of baffled me that it didn't release with any multiplayer mode for those of you unaware stride uses a range of different body movements to run jump wall run and slide through its levels the single player was fun but it quickly began to feel quite empty and lonely at least in my opinion as personally for me and this goes for really any single player game that isn't heavily narrative driven i just get freaking lonely however this month stride has gone a fully fledged multiplayer mode with a ton of absolutely Freaking sick environments, jump pad, zip lines, freaking dope customization, a horde mode, king of the hill. The movement system truly shines in this multiplayer mode, and I was dripping with sweat after a couple of intense games. Although, like most multiplayer quest games, the community is dominated with squeakers, but not quite near the level of ear bleedingly frustrating as Rec Room or Gorilla Tag, at least during my playtime. I would like to see more customization, though, as right now, from my playtime at least, I could only select preset outfits, and I'd prefer to be able to, like, individually customize customize each aspect of my character's gear and unlock more pieces of specific gear through playing more multiplayer matches or having some sort of rank and progression system because right now as fun as stride multiplayer is you don't really feel like you're progressing i think levels would be a great addition xp generated from how long you survived in the horde mode xp generated from each game your performance in those games and then that leading to unlocking more items would add a truly great sense of progression and would get me playing a lot more i'd also love to see some pvp modes too and some game modes that allow you to use the grapple hook that was found in stride single player and look i, I honestly can't believe how fucking fun this is and how fluid this movement system is it's one of the few vr games that i truly feel like i am the one moving i am the one who's running it's sick i mean literally it might make you fucking motion sick i'll be totally honest though i'd like to be able to run even faster if possible i'd like the game to reward players who really fucking sprint like mad with some extra speed instead of just capping out pretty early on or perhaps slowing down the base speed making it harder to reach can mac 10 strides multiplayer gets a god tier on this list but i would like to see where this goes in the future and like to see some more updates like i've just listed now i'm pretty freaking amped about this next one veil VR. Veil is quite possibly the future of VR FPS. From solid gunplay, diverse map design, surprisingly deep lore, Discord Nitro quality voice chat, competitive gameplay not being out yet. Wait, what? Veil is still in alpha stage, and it clearly shows. Maps are still unfinished, there are a handful of bugs, and the performance even on my 3090 is a bit sh**. 
out. I got to play a multiple hours worth of games with Thrill, VRO, Gamertag, Viper, Panda, and many other content creators as we beam the ever living shit out of each other. It's essentially a reworked CSGO in VR with some unique twists. I mean, this map basically encompasses what this game is. It's very clearly inspired by Dust 2, but has been given some significant tweaks and quirks added to it. Veil is taking everything great about CSGO and reworking it into a modern VR shooter. Isn't that just fing. That's just Pavlov, though. Well, yes, but actually, no. Unlike Pavlov, Veil's gameplay is snappy, responsive, and very satisfying. Not to say that Pavlov's is bad, but it can feel a little floaty and artificial at times. Hell, even planting Veil's version of a bomb requires a small yet engaging little mini game to both activate and deactivate it. Grenades are attached to your wrist and are easy and accurate to get off and throw. The black and white team design forces you to take advantage of the stark environments around you to blend in. Graphically, the game isn't too flashy or too dark. Dull. The pistols are satisfying as f custom lobbies, matchmaking, social experiences, a 5v5 competitive game mode, casual game modes, and the developers are giving me money. Uh, yeah, this is the sponsored segment. After playing the game for a few hours, the developers offered me uh, to sponsor this segment. However, like anything on this channel, I don't accept sponsorships for something I don't like or don't believe in. So after playing with the devs and seeing how they take feedback, listen to players, and are continuously open and willing to make changes to the game, it's clear to me, provided that these devs continue on their current path and continue to listen to individual players, this game has absolutely insane potential. Very rarely do we get an opportunity like this within the gaming industry, where the average player can just talk directly with developers and even play with developers regularly and suggest changes and have those changes take place or be taken seriously. After five years in development, Veil vale VR has a free beta releasing this July for anyone who requests access on Veil's vale Steam page. Not only do you get free access to the beta, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, but if you do join the the free beta, you will gain access to the full game for life for free. Uh, you can join Veil vale VR's Discord at discord.gg forward slash Veil vale VR to participate in weekly events or just hang out with the dope community and developers. The beta will also be followed by an esports tournament with land finals in Miami with a minimum cash prize of $35,000. And my G Thrill with Thrill Seeker Media Group will be hosting an open casting call for other VR influencers. So if you're watching this and you're a VR influencer, Influencer, you have the opportunity to get paid and promote Veil VR's beta. Links to Veil, their Discord, and directions to join the beta will all be linked below. Now, Veil VR gets an honorable mention considering it's not out yet, and it would, you know, be a little questionable if I gave a sponsored game like or God Tier, whatever, like some channels. <laughs> Next up is, of course, the game that clearly seems to be shaping up to be the most influential game for the future of the Quest 2 and just native VR as a whole, Bone Labs. Bone Labs is slated for release later this year and is a sequel to the fucking astoundingly good 2019's Boneworks. Developed by Stress Level Zero, you embody an outcast escaping fate, discovering a pathway to a hidden underground research facility. You create your own avatar, you have your own physical stats, and will be able to access a multitude of different game locations, including arenas, obstacle courses, as tactical trials, sandboxes, experimental modes, and user-generated levels. But most importantly is what this game means for the future of the quest. Boneworks was a physics-first game, essentially being the Gmod of VR, and pushed some of the highest spec PCs to the limit with its physics system. So seeing its sequel, which seems to have in some areas upgraded the physics system, is a huge challenge to port to the Quest 2. And from what we've seen so far, the Quest 2 port of Bone Labs looks genuinely great graphically in comparison to many other the Quest titles. It's still yet to be seen how in-depth the Quest 2's version of the physics system is. Bone Labs provided it delivers on its physics-based promises would be a bigger leap for native VR than the distance between your mother's cheeks. Also, if you actually for some reason like my content, check out my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash get hit. I stream relatively regularly and my Discord at discord.gg forward slash get hit where you can talk to me directly in many of the voice channels. Now, considering it's not out yet, I'm not going to be giving Bone Labs a god tier quite yet because it's not out yet. I'm going to give it a preemptive baseline <laughs> for the time being. Now, for more of an honorable mention, but I still feel is relevant to the VR racing scene as a whole, and please bear with me here, even if you don't have a gaming PC, but Assetto Corsa. Assetto Corsa is a PC VR exclusive, and for good reason. Before you fucking abandon me because you're like, PC VR. Ah! That doesn't mean you shouldn't care, as, you know, unfortunately, anything PC VR specific nowadays, perhaps due to the Quest 2 generating more of a mainstream audience that don't generally have full-blown gaming PCs, seems to be causing some to just flat-out claim PC 
PCVR is dead. And for as long as Assetto Corsa exists, it sure as hell is not dead. Assetto Corsa is fucking insane. But not because of necessarily the game itself, but instead its community. Assetto Corsa is kind of the G mod of racing games. You buy this game to mod it. The modding community can only be described as chimpanzees on fucking pure crystal meth. The sheer amount of cars, each with their own properly recorded engine, braking, gear selecting, exhaust, and suspension sound, custom tracks with fully populated AI traffic, lighting mods, and VR mods that will make you blacklist this game for life out of pure fear that you'll be sucked into the endless modding black hole. However, once you do set up at least a base level of mods and tune the game for whatever VR ready rig you have with some basic YouTube tutorials, the experience is like no other. VR sim racing is one of the most one-to-one -one recreations of a real life experience. I got into a setup after having just bought my first car. Check it out. Look at it. It's kind of cool. Look at a little Luba car, man. In order to practice for my driving test, perhaps not the best idea to attempt to practice for my driving tests by driving on a Japanese highway at 90 miles an hour. But this sort of experience provided you're willing to put in the time and money to get a truly decent sim rig and a range of settings and mods up and running can truly give you one of the most immersive and impressive VR experiences to date. Assetto Corsa also gets an honorable mention due to being PC VR exclusive, but if you have the time and money, check this game out. And we have we don't have anything in dog water yet, so getting a dog water on this list is my f***ing channel. <laughs> Also, please follow me on Twitch, Instagram, Twitter. I stream relatively regularly on my Twitch and I post to my Instagram and Twitter every now and then. Also, join my Discord at discord.gg forward slash gap if you want to talk to me directly in voice chat. I like to hang out in the voice chat. So if you want to ask me any questions or just get alerted to when I go live on Twitch, join my Discord. I'd love to hang out with you. I'm a piece of fuck out because I have to go do driving lesson. Uh, amazing.